outfits in Heathers. The 1980s are widely considered the golden age of teen flicks, with films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Breakfast Club, and Footloose proving how powerful the teen dollar had become. Many of the now iconic teen films from this era were directed by John Hughes, and his distinctive style of storytelling that focused on lighthearted coming-of-age stories have since become a staple of the genre. However, there were some teen films of the time that rebelled against this happy-go-lucky message, with a notable example being 1988's Heathers, which leaned into the macabre and presented a darker view of adolescence. Although the film was initially considered both a critical and commercial failure, it is now regarded as a cult classic, with a fantastic musical and an awful TV show being produced in more recent years. What is your damage, Heather? Even if you've never watched Heathers, chances are you've watched something inspired by it, like Jawbreaker, Mean Girls, or even Scream Queens, proving that in many ways it was simply ahead of its time. The dark comedy follows a young girl, Veronica Sawyer, who is part of the most popular clique at her high school, the Heathers. After accidentally poisoning her best friend slash enemy, Heather Chandler, Veronica's unhinged boyfriend, JD, helps cover up the murder in order to make it appear like a suicide resulting in the villainous Heather being worshipped even in death. With the school and community still reeling from the event, JD continues murdering popular students and staging them as suicides, leaving Veronica no choice but to stop him herself. The film was a commentary on societal issues like conformity and classism, choosing to highlight how people like the Heathers, Veronica, and JD came from a place of privilege where they were systematically able to get away with both literal and figurative murder. In today's video, we'll be examining the outfits of the four main female characters from Heathers, Heather Chandler, Heather McNamara, Heather Duke, and Veronica Sawyer, and how their clothing relates to their personalities, psyche, and place in their social hierarchy. But before we get into it, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Casetify. Casetify has some of the slimmest and most protective cases in the world, and with thousands of different colors and designs available, your phone can be as safe as it is stylish. I personally love how many customizable options they have, so you'll never have to sacrifice your personality for your phone's protection ever again. With their trademarked Qi Tech, Casetify's impact cases are proven to withstand drops up to 6.6 .6 feet, and their ultra impact cases can even handle drops up to 9.8 feet, so you won't have to worry about your phone smashing to smithereens like Heather's coffee table. Casetify's new impact and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials, and their ultra compostable cases are 100% compostable. Plus, every single order even comes in compostable packaging, making them even more environmentally friendly. All of Casetify's cases have an antimicrobial coating that has been proven to kill 99% of bacteria, helping keep your phone germ-free, which is much needed in this day and age. Head on over to casetify.com slash moderngirls today and get 15% off your order. Now, let's get into the video. Heather Chandler Heather Chandler is undoubtedly the most popular girl at school, with the character instilling both terror and awe in others. Does it not bother you that everybody in this school thinks that you're a piranha? Like, I give a shit. They all want me as a friend or a fuck. In the film for less than 30 minutes, it's a testament to the actress, Kim Walker, and the character herself that she's able to make such a lasting impression on the audience, something that is mirrored in the plot of the film, with Heather Chandler continuing to influence her schoolmates long after her unexpected passing. The person who sets the events of the film in motion, the movie starts off with a shot of Heather tying up her hair with her now iconic scrunchie, an incredibly 80s accessory that is a symbol of her power, kind of like a crown, and her rare moments of weakness are only when she doesn't have it on her. In this fantasy sequence, Heather C is wearing a solid oversized blazer, a shirt and tie, a floral skirt, white tights, and ballet flats. This combination of masculine and feminine elements are a staple of the character's style, highlighting how she has traits that are often attributed to both genders. She's more confident and straightforward in a way that is traditionally associated with male characters, while maintaining traits that women are often stereotyped as having, like bossiness and deceitfulness. The other girls in the group also incorporate these masculine elements into their wardrobes, but this is largely due to Heather's influence on them, and following her passing, we see their individual styles begin to change. 
In this dream sequence, it's obvious who Veronica considers the queen bee, with Heather Duke and Heather McNamara wearing daintier ensembles in comparison to Heather Chandler's youthful take on a power suit. Heather's penchant for this style of clothing reflects her deep-seated desire to be taken seriously and be treated as an adult, dressing not like an ordinary teen, but instead as a near caricature of the working woman. You might recognize similar shoulder pad heavy outfits worn by the characters in 1988's Working Girl and 1991's Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, who had characters with similarly ambitious and devious traits. A perfect combination of 80s power dressing and preppy private school, her outfit is what one would expect from an upper class girl, and ties into the film's themes of power, privilege, and conformity. No other teen girls in the film dress in this style, showing that the Heathers are deliberately setting themselves apart from their peers, making it clear that they see everyone else as beneath them, people who are completely unworthy of their time or attention. This creates an interesting juxtaposition to other popular girls in teen films like Cher Horowitz or Regina George, who intentionally dressed in trendy outfits in order to inspire and appeal to others. Dressed exclusively in red, white, and black, these colors are symbolic of different aspects of Heather's personality and public perception. Red has many intense connotations, both positive and negative, ranging from love and lust to death and danger to corruption and confidence. The specific shade of bright scarlet that Heather often wears was popularized by Nancy Reagan, who wore the color so often that it was colloquially referred to as Reagan Red during the 1980s. According to the film's art director, Kara Lindstrom, they purposely based Heather Chandler's appearance on a young Nancy Reagan, helping contemporary audiences create an immediate association between the character and the controversial First Lady. Although white is often associated with positive traits, it can also stand for emptiness and coldness, which are fitting descriptors for Heather considering how cruelly she treats her supposed friends. White is also symbolic of innocence, and Heather's use of the color could be a form of deception, creating a more pleasant facade to hide her more wicked behavior. Black is often attributed to drama, power, decay, and of course, evil, and many characters refer to Heather as such, and for good reason. At school, Heather is wearing a gray plaid blazer, a white blouse, red shorts, white tights, and ballet flats. The outfit, which definitely doesn't hold up well today, highlights her role as the group's leader, with the rest of the Heathers attempting to replicate the ensemble, but far less successfully. This is especially noticeable when you look at their blazers, the most eye-catching pieces of their ensembles. The other Heathers opt for solid colors, reflecting their roles as weak-willed sidekicks who are afraid of drawing attention from Heather C and earning her wrath. The only member of the group whose blazer is remotely experimental is Veronica, representing how she's the only one who's willing to stand up to Heather and is in a sense the only one who could successfully take her place. Unlike the rest of the girls who wear skirts at school, Heather's shorts represent the character's position of power within their social hierarchy. She's the boss and the other girls work for her, with Veronica as her secretary and the other Heathers being her gophers. With their shoulder pads, stockings, and diamond earrings, the Heathers are dressed as would-be politicians and high-level executives, serving as an allegory for status-hungry members of high society. These skirts and blazers are the group's de facto uniforms, and other cliques of the school similarly differentiate themselves with their clothing, with the B-listers sporting stripes, the jocks dressed in school colors, and the slackers in leather, symbolizing how everyone conforms to societal expectations in their own way. At the college party that she attends with Veronica, Heather is extremely overdressed, wearing a red dress and pearls that look more appropriate for the yacht club than a frat house. This is yet another instance of her attempting to dress older than she really is, revealing how clueless Heather is about what adulthood and maturity actually entails. This is the first instance where she doesn't have her scrunchie on hand, the symbol of her power, and she's later pressured into becoming intimate with a guy when she doesn't want to. Keep in mind that at the time the movie was released, the conversation about sexual harassment and assault was very different than what it is today. In many films, it was treated as a joke or something for male characters to be proud of, with Revenge of the Nerds and The License to Drive coming to mind. The female characters in Heathers aren't able to vocalize the harassment they experience, which is a sad reflection of the times, but the film did stand out by depicting this predatory behavior in a negative light, with male characters like Ram or JD being punished instead of rewarded for their actions. 
Heather awakens the following morning to JD and Veronica in her bedroom, the latter hoping to patch things up after their explosive argument the night before. Heather is wearing a pink and white dressing gown with pink ballet slippers, and it's by far the sweetest ensemble we've seen her in so far. This choice is likely because one, she's at home, the place where she's able to let down her walls and be vulnerable, and second, it highlights how young she is, emphasizing to the audience that no matter how awful she's been, Heather is still just a kid. The lack of red in this outfit also signifies how defenseless she currently is, and she even removes her scrunchie as she gets out of bed, leaving her truly powerless. After JD gives her a cup of drain cleaner, Heather lands with a crash to her death on her plush red carpet, and that's the last we see of her alive. At her funeral, she's wearing what looks like a very light pink or maybe a white dress. It's honestly tough to tell because of the lighting. Either way, the soft color makes her appear more innocent, which plays into the new, sympathetic narrative that has sprung up about her since her supposed suicide. Pearls are symbolic of innocence as well as wealth, with the accessory revealing how important appearances and affluence are to their community, and that materialism and shallowness goes hand in hand with privilege and popularity. You'll also notice that compared to the outfits we've seen her wear previously, which featured sharper silhouettes and masculine touches, this is incredibly feminine. It doesn't look like something she'd pick out herself, mirroring how she's no longer in control of her own image or public perception. The outfit was obviously chosen by her parents, who no doubt do see her as someone who is innocent, and in a way the styling almost makes her look like an angel, solidifying her new legacy. In yet another dream sequence, although this one is far more nightmarish, we see Heather Chandler for the final time as a figment of Veronica's overactive imagination. The outfit is black, representing death, red for blood, and white for Heather's spirit, symbolizing how she's haunting Veronica. With a gothic styling and avant-garde shape, this is clearly not the Heather we've come to know, representing how twisted the truth has become. Although it's pretty difficult to tell, the outfit is made up of an assortment of stripes, referring to how Heather is now in purgatory, an eternal prison. My afterlife is so boring. Heather McNamara. When the film begins, Heather M is wearing a pair of leggings, a ruffled dress, a thick belt, and a jacket. And once again, this color palette is representative of her personality. A brighter color than green or blue, yellow is often associated with cheerfulness and sensitivity, and over the course of the film, she's the one who's most affected by the deaths of her schoolmates and even attempts to commit suicide herself. Yellow is also analogous for cowardice, hence the phrase yellow belly, and out of the group, Heather M is the most afraid of standing up for herself, being controlled by both Heathers over the course of the film, revealing her desperation to cling to her social status and fear of becoming an outcast herself. Everyone jump off a bridge, would you? Probably. From the very beginning, there are a lot more black details in her wardrobe compared to the other girls, foreshadowing the decline of her mental health. I've seen some people say that she's the friendliest out of the bunch, but I'd argue that the only reason it seems like that is because she's too scared to say or do anything without someone else's explicit permission. This lack of individuality is essentially a form of protection, allowing her to exist within the group without receiving the level of vitriol that Heather Duke and Veronica are subject to as people Heather Chandler actually feels threatened by. God damn, Heather, you were with me in study hall when I thought of it. I forgot. Such a pillowcase. The following day at school, she wears the simplest outfit of the group, which reflects her lack of confidence and individuality, and she winds up being the only character who doesn't even attempt to become the leader after Heather Chandler's death, preferring for things to stay just as they are. You'll also notice that while the other girls wear patterns and accessories that lean into their preppy stereotypes, Heather M's wardrobe is typically made up of solid colors and comfortable fabrics, reiterating that her personality is more athletic than academic, and furthering the implication that she isn't seen as smart by the other girls. When Heather Chandler's suicide is announced, Heather M is wearing a yellow skirt, leggings, a blue top, and an acid-washed jean jacket. The outfit itself is disjointed, mirroring Heather's confused state of mind and revealing that without someone to guide her, she can barely even figure out how to dress herself. It's also significantly more casual than her prior outfits, showing how much of an effect Heather Chandler's style had on her own. And with her gone, she's reverted to a less restrictive wardrobe. 
Besides being the color of sadness, blue is also Veronica's signature color, making it clear to the audience that Heather M is desperately searching for a new queen bee to serve, and she even gives Veronica one of Heather Chandler's watches in a snarky show of deference. Speaking of swatches, the brand was fairly hip and trendy around the time the film was released, standing out from its competitors for being bright and colorful in a world of neutral accessories, something that mirrors how desperate the Heathers are to appear unique amongst their peers. At Heather Chandler's funeral, Heather Duke shows up wearing an outfit that is more appropriate for a cocktail party, while Veronica has the nerve to wear blue instead of black, leaving Heather McNamara the only one showing any respect for the dead at least when compared to the rest of the group. She's wearing a string of pearls, an accessory that was primarily worn by Heather Chandler, which could be seen as the character attempting to dress in a way that her former leader would have approved of, something she no doubt feels pressured to do considering Heather is technically in front of her. Some of her other accessories, like her hoop earrings and watch, are yellow, revealing that she hasn't been completely swallowed up by her depressing circumstances. On her horrific double date with Veronica, Heather M wears an all gray outfit with the exception of some bright yellow socks, expressing the same sentiment as her funeral ensemble. You'll notice that she's incredibly covered up and has on multiple layers, something she no doubt did in an attempt to hold off Ram's advances, who proceeds to force himself upon her regardless. I attribute this undoubtedly traumatizing moment as the catalyst for the character's spiral into depression, and she continues to wear outfits that are more black and gray than they are yellow. Both of these colors are representative of two different distressing incidents in her life, the death of Heather Chandler and her assault by Ram, and this effect on her psyche is reflected in the color's continued presence in her wardrobe. At a certain point, she goes the opposite direction, almost exclusively wearing yellow, but it's a front, an attempt to convince herself that she's happy when it's really the opposite. It also signifies that she's once again fallen into her role as a lackey, but this time her leader is Heather Duke. The character's eventual breaking point happens at school, where she's ridiculed for sharing her mental health struggles on the radio, something she only resorted to because she wasn't able to trust her best friends. Man, she knows we listen to this show. Me. Holy shit, we'll crucify her. Where's Heather going? She's going to cry. She's wearing the school's cheerleading uniform, which just so happens to be red and black, colors that are not only representative of her anger and depression, but are also a callback to Heather Chandler and signify her lasting influence on the school. This marks the only moment in the film when Heather McNamara takes charge, believing that suicide is the only way to regain control of her life. And since she's wearing Heather Chandler's colors, we can see it as Heather M's attempt to draw strength from her friend. Thankfully, she's stopped by Veronica before it's too late, and this is the last we see of Heather McNamara in the film. I'd like to think that if she'd made another appearance, she might have been wearing orange, which would show that she's taken some of Heather Chandler's traits, but instead of trying to be an exact copy, she's evolved. Heather Duke In many different mediums, whether it's animated cartoons or comic books, green is often incorporated into the wardrobe of the villains, and while Heather's is filled with flawed, even outright evil characters, Heather Duke manages to stand out from the bunch as a particularly wicked antagonist. While the rest of the Heathers tend to gravitate towards a single shade of their signature color, Heather Duke wears a wide array of greens, from olive to emerald to chartreuse, with each specific shade having a different meaning. Olive green is traditionally the color of peace, dating all the way back to ancient Greece when an olive branch was used as a token of friendship. Emerald green, taking its name from the gemstone of the same color, is often associated with wealth and ambition while chartreuse, with its yellowish hues, is symbolic of sickness and cowardice. Green is perhaps most famously associated with jealousy, hence the phrase green-eyed monster, and from the very beginning of the film it's obvious that Heather Duke desperately wants to take Heather Chandler's role as the leader, something that she gets punished for. Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? First you ask if you can be red, knowing that I'm always red. At the beginning of the film, Heather Duke is wearing a three-piece set which has a green and white pattern and an inverted patterned blouse. The matching elements of the outfit reveal Heather Duke's perfectionist nature, and as previously mentioned, it's far more subdued than what Heather Chandler is wearing, both in color and silhouette, showing the audience how Veronica and the rest of the girls perceive Heather Duke as someone docile and meek, a doormat. And this wouldn't be a far-off assessment, considering the following day at school, Heather winds up being used as a literal desk for her friends to write on, 
despite them being surrounded by dozens of perfectly good lunch tables. In spite of this, there are still a few moments where we see her attempt to fight back against her tormentor, notably while the girls are playing croquet. Besides attempting to play as the red ball, she also impresses the other girls when she's able to make a near impossible shot, infuriating Heather Chandler enough that she goes out of her way to hit her ball one more time. Why? Why not? During these scenes, we see Heather Duke wear a similar ensemble to the rest of the girls, but what's interesting to note is that out of the bunch, she's the only one who dared to incorporate any red into her wardrobe, with the color appearing in the plaid of her skirt. Besides this clearly being an attempt to emulate Heather Chandler, it also foreshadows the character's eventual evolution from an insecure bookworm in green to a vindictive bitch in red. And when she claims Heather's color for herself later in the film, it doesn't come as a surprise. Heather Duke is absolutely ecstatic when she finds out about Heather Chandler's death, chowing down on a chicken leg, something that directly contrasts with her behavior when Heather was still alive, showing that the negativity and pressure that she once fell victim to is a thing of the past. At Heather Chandler's funeral, we find out that she'd even wished death upon her on numerous occasions, and as such, she comes dressed like she's going to a party, because in her mind, this funeral is something to celebrate. She's by no means experiencing the guilt or confusion that Veronica and Heather McNamara are going through. In the early days following Heather C's death, Heather Duke continues to wear her signature color, and the outfits themselves are fun and youthful, as if a weight had been lifted off of her shoulders. It isn't until JD manipulates her into taking Heather Chandler's place as the leader of the school that she begins to change, both in appearance and personality. And Westerberg does not need mushy togetherness, it needs a strong leader. Heather Chandler was that leader, but... But she couldn't handle it. JD gives her the red scrunchie and she immediately takes to wearing it, and it's almost as though she's possessed by the spirit of Heather Chandler, becoming as much of a tyrant and menace as she was. You'll notice that during this scene with JD, she's actually wearing a pink turtleneck, as if she's testing Heather's color out, because at this point, she still isn't sure if she can actually take her place. But as she grows more powerful and corrupt, she becomes more brazen, and soon enough she's wearing even more red than Heather Chandler ever had. Heather, why can't you just be a friend? Why are you such a mega bitch? Because I can be. Her role as the new leader is actually alluded to early on, with the character's hair being a subtle shade of dark red. Besides helping her stand out amongst the sea of blondes and brunettes, it also allows the audience to understand that deep down, she's always had the capacity to be as evil as Heather Chandler. She just needed a little push. Funnily enough, they originally wanted all three Heathers to be blonde, but actress Shannon Doherty refused because it would have destroyed her naturally dark hair, so they compromised on red, which I think wound up working even better. Like Heather Chandler, many of her outfits are accented by black, but without any white to balance it out, revealing how corrupted she's become and how unafraid she is to show it. Compared to the characters' more playful ensembles that we saw earlier, her outfits at this point are structured and stiff, replicating the mature style of clothing that Heather Chandler had taken to wearing, with the transformation becoming most apparent with the addition of stockings and heeled pumps in contrast to her frilly socks and Mary Janes from the beginning of the film. Other than incorporating the color red into her wardrobe, you'll also notice that her once straight hair is now curly, another example of her attempting to copy Heather Chandler in order to solidify her role as her replacement. From the very beginning of the film, it's been clear that Heather Duke has an excellent sense of self-preservation and is acutely aware of how to ingratiate herself to others. And this talent is highlighted when she's tasked by JD to get other students' signatures for what they believe is a petition, but is really a mass suicide note. As she speaks to the individual cliques at the school, she dresses in a way that will appeal to each of them respectively, something that's a stark contrast to Heather Chandler's haughty, I'm better than you approach from the beginning of the film. She wears a simple all red outfit when meeting with the jocks, which is not only symbolic of flirtatiousness, but is an ode to the school colors. When she's meeting with the stoners, she sports a green army jacket with pins, an article of clothing that has since become synonymous with that subculture. And with the greasers, she wears a black military-inspired jacket and a purple skirt, making her look like Madonna meets Michael Jackson. After Veronica saves the school, she confronts Heather Duke, taking the red scrunchie out of her hair and claiming it as her own, another symbolic transfer of power. 
Carrying the zebra-like tote bag that she's had since the beginning of the film, we can infer that Heather Duke hasn't learned her lesson, and would be willing to do it all again. After all, a zebra can't change its stripes. Having given up every aspect of herself in her quest for popularity and power, she's a cautionary tale against conformity, and ends the film as a caricature of someone else. Veronica Sawyer Although she's our protagonist, and eventually the hero of the film, like all of the Heathers, Veronica is shallow and materialistic, abandoning her past friends in exchange for a chance at popularity, something that she does feel guilty for but doesn't do anything about, revealing her to be as much of a conformist and coward as the other girls. Not only is she extremely cynical and self-absorbed, but she's also a pretentious snob as evidenced by the literal monocle that she wears and her regular snide remarks at those she believes are inferior to her. You're beautiful. If you're gonna openly be a bitch. It's just Heather, why can't we talk to different kinds of people? This sense of superiority is reiterated in the styling of her clothing, which feature aristocratic elements like ornate brooches, bowler hats, and waistcoats. It's great pate, but I got a motor if I want to be ready for that party tonight. Um, great pate, but I'm going to have to motor if I want to be ready for that funeral. Veronica is the odd one out amongst the group as she's the only one who expresses any discomfort over their bullying and torment of others. And this difference is highlighted in the colors of her outfits, which are mostly black and gray in early scenes. While the other girls wear their signature colors proudly, coming off as a coordinated unit, Veronica hides her colors, distancing herself from the group visually and making her inner turmoil obvious. The lack of blue in her wardrobe at this point is representative of how lost and unsure Veronica currently is, and it isn't until after Heather Chandler's death that she feels a semblance of normalcy. I can't believe it. I just killed my best friend. And your worst enemy. Same difference. Besides black being symbolic of unhappiness, the color is also worn by JD, who Veronica is instantly drawn to, and the two are kindred spirits of sorts, with JD vocalizing and acting on the thoughts that Veronica has been keeping to herself. And throughout the film, when the two are on the same page, their outfits are synchronized. You a Heather? No, I'm a Veronica. No, my life's not perfect. I don't really like my friends. Yeah, I, uh... I don't really like your friends either. Another fucking Heather. Sorry, I'm uh, just feeling a little superior tonight. At the beginning of the film, Blue is limited to her accessories, notably her stockings. But at Heather's funeral, she's wearing the color from head to toe. Veronica stands out as being the only person at the funeral who isn't in mourning, making it clear that although she feels guilty about inadvertently causing Heather's death, she doesn't regret it. Technically, I did not kill Heather Chandler, but hey, who am I trying to kid, right? I just want my high school to be a nice place. Did that sound bitchy? Blue has both positive and negative associations, symbolizing loyalty and honesty, as well as solitude and passivity. Like green, it's considered an intellectual color, and both Veronica and Heather Duke are depicted as being bookish and brainy. Blue is also associated with water, while red corresponds with fire, and the two elements are constantly at odds with one another and mutually destructive, resembling the relationship between Veronica and Heather Chandler. In this case, water came out the winner, with Veronica snuffing out Heather's life. And although it's obvious, we also have to mention the she's feeling blue metaphor, with the character growing more melancholic and depressed as the film progresses. Following Heather's death, she wears a few outfits that are predominantly blue, but as the relationship between her and JD grows closer, Black begins to re-enter her wardrobe, and when she's tricked into killing Ram and Kurt, the couple are wearing complimentary ensembles. At Kurt and Ram's funeral, she wears an appropriately black outfit, which marks the first moment she actually feels remorseful for her part in the murders. Up until this point, Veronica has seen these deaths as necessary evils in order to justify her actions, but this funeral is a rude awakening, and she begins to question if what she's done is right, marking a rift in her relationship with JD. Dear diary, my teen angst bullshit has a body count. Following this, she's shown wearing dark purple, a combination of her signature color and Heather Chandler's, 
This not only signifies the chaos that has infiltrated her life, but also the power she currently holds, having effectively killed everyone who has wronged her. JD similarly incorporates Red into his wardrobe, but in a far more obvious manner than Veronica does, and we can see that he's not only growing more power hungry, but more deranged as well. After she breaks up with JD, she stops wearing black entirely, sporting comfortable and casual outfits that incorporate shades of blue and gray instead. The styling of these outfits is representative of how far she's come from her stuck-up days as a Heather, and we see the character do a near 180 when it comes to her attitude towards others. Not only is she kinder and more empathetic, but she's also significantly less concerned about conforming to the status quo. In her more self-assured state, we see her reconcile with Betty Finn, admonish Heather Duke for her insensitivity, and comfort Heather McNamara after her suicide attempt. These actions highlight the growing divide between her and JD, and even when he attempts to reunite with her, she's able to hold her own and rebuff him. When she finds out JD's plan to blow up the school, Veronica sets out to stop him, willing to sacrifice herself for others, something that Veronica at the beginning of the film would have never dreamed of doing. In yet another gray and blue outfit, the character's resilience and confidence is on full display, and she refuses to bow down to JD even when death is staring her in the face. Covered in soot and blood, Veronica's final evolution occurs after she takes hold of Heather Scrunchie, marking the fourth and final transfer of power in the film. Considering all of her problems began because she was unable to stand up to Heather Chandler and JD, this is a fitting resolution for the character. Due to the film's initially poor reception, plans for a sequel were quickly shelved, but Winona Ryder continued to fight for Veronica's story. At one point, there was talk of a project where Veronica would be working in Washington, D.C. for a new Heather, a senator played by Meryl Streep, before she would eventually go on to assassinate the president. Unfortunately, the project never came to fruition, but it definitely would have been an interesting premise, especially considering high school isn't the only place that privilege runs rampant, and Heathers and JDs can be found anywhere. Which character in Heathers had your favorite style moment? I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon! Bye!